Welcome to another episode of the Bandage Podcast, a weekly wrap-up of the most trending healthcare news. Each week, join me and my co-host Alex Ross as we'll discuss the latest in healthcare, health IT, and compliance. In this week's episode, we discuss a mushroom recall, remote hormone control research, and remote setup of an in-home voice technology for healthcare. Let's wrap things up. This is episode 30 for the week of April 27th. I'm Matt Moneypenny. And I'm Alex Ross. Before we get started, our diagnosis code of the week is E55.9, vitamin D, deficiency unspecified. You know, interestingly enough, Matt, uh, this is has this happened, has happened to, to me. Oh, yeah. I didn't see that one coming. Um, you know, because over the past couple weeks, I've been trying to get more active. I've been trying to get outside, and each time it seems to not work for me. Mm-hmm. Um, so, obviously, the best option then is to just not go outside, right? Right. Of so that's exactly what I've been doing. So, do you have scurvy then too? Uh, very shortly, I will because I need to get to the store, and uh, I don't have any oranges left. So, <laughs> <laughs> everyone's becoming a pirate during this quarantine because there's no vitamin D. Exactly. Sure. Fair. And with that, let's get right into the news. First up, we have don't make room in your kitchen for these mushrooms. Guan's Mushroom Company of Commerce, California, is recalling all cases of its 200 gram or 7.05 ounce packages of enoki mushroom. They've potentially contaminated with listeria, an organism which can cause serious and sometimes fatal infections, especially in young children, elderly people, and those with weakened immune systems. The recalled products were distributed from California, New York, and Pennsylvania. No illnesses have been reported in connection with the problem. The distribution of the product has been suspended, and consumers who purchased the packages have urged to return them to the place purchase for a full refund. Hey, recalls for food during a pandemic. What a concept. (laughs) I personally love mushrooms. Like I, I will eat raw mushrooms cooked mushrooms mushrooms on everything just 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 wonderful. dial me up load uh, me up with some shrooms man <laughs> no not some shrooms we're talking well. gourmet here <laughs> <laughs> but um you know enokis are one of my favorites they're absolutely delicious mm-hmm. and i'm thankful that i haven't been to the grocery store lately uh, because maybe i would have picked up a, a case of these and potentially subjected myself to some sickness yeah, yeah. Nothing like getting sickness in two types of ways. Potentially yeah. getting the coronavirus, potentially getting listeria. I don't want anything to do with either of those. So I'm not going to buy mushrooms anytime soon. Well, you, you always have some kind of a, a, a challenge with mushrooms. They could potentially cause some kind of sickness, you know, because they're grown in compost. They're, you know, harvested by hand, those kind of things. So I, I'm surprised we don't see it more often. Mm-hmm. Um, but for that reason, I mean, maybe just cook your mushrooms. That's probably the best option. Yeah, cook your, cook your mushrooms, guys. Be safe. This hormone control could stick for helping mental health. Abnormal levels of stress hormones are linked to a variety of mental health disorders, including depression and post-traumatic stress disorder, PTSD. MIT researchers devised a way to remotely control the release of these hormones from the adrenal gland using magnetic nanoparticles, which are injected into the adrenal gland. When exposed to weak magnetic field, these particles heat up slightly and activate heat-responsive channels to trigger hormone release. This can be used to stimulate the organ with minimal invasiveness. The researchers plan to use this approach to study how hormone release affects mental health disorders like PTSD. They say they could eventually adapt it for treating disorders like that as well as others. Good move in the mental health space. A lot of this wording for this story it sounds very complicated. It actually sounds like it's straight from a Marvel movie, particularly yeah, a like an, a, a hero's original story where they deal with magnetic nanoparticles that are injected into their adrenal glands. Um, but overall, you know, anything that's trying to heal mental health is good. I think it's kind of entertaining that it, it just says, you know, when it's exposed to a weak magnetic field, which it conjures this image of like going to your doctors and 
they're just like, so how are you doing? And you're like, ah, you know, I'm feeling kind of sad. And the doctor just leans back and grabs a magnet off the fridge. Yeah. And just like starts rubbing it on your neck. <laughs> you're like, oh, thank you, doctor. This is why I went to you to rub a magnet on my neck. Right. Just myself. Uh, though, I should say that um, I had the wrong idea of what an adrenal gland is. The adrenal gland is actually on your kidney. Ah. So. <laughs> I had to look that up real quick because I'm like, wait a minute, that doesn't seem right. Uh, so he just kind of rubs a magnet on the small Which of the back. <laughs> um, both. <laughs> this is the, my the, good side kidney. <laughs> Next up, we have hands-free setup at home. Hands-free Health announced a patent-pending technology which allows remote setup of its systems. It will be applied across the hands-free health platform and well be a HIPAA compliant voice enabled virtual assistant platform. The technologies minimize disruptions to healthcare while also providing the entertainment of a voice assistant to help relieve anxiety among especially older and isolated populations. The patent will enable un remote universal registration and setup and continuous updates for consumers, employers, and health plans with the hands free health platform. As more employers are working from home and more consumers are staying home, Voice technology can help improve health outcomes in, wait for it, home environments. <laughs> lots so, of, uh, lots of use of the word home here. Um, I think that's what they're trying to hit home. Right. So you, you can't see this obviously because you're listening to a podcast, but the image that's on this article is like an Amazon Alexa, but it has a little red cross in the middle of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's wearing a stethoscope. Perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I, I'm guessing that that's probably... It's uh, a very homey feel. I, I want to say that I assume that's not actually like the real thing. This is just an example of like demonstrating yeah. what it does. Uh, but right. the caption says, well be hands-free voice assistant platform. So I, <laughs> I'm not sure. You may just get... Alexa that's wearing a stethoscope. Yeah, there you go. With a little <laughs> cosplay Alexa, you could, you know, this is always great, especially if you are home alone um, and need to go to the doctor. So, you know, or need any kind of help and health, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. wellness. It's all good for that. You know, this is clearly a press release coming from Hands Free Health that we were, that we added into this. So it sounds right. kind of advertisey, but, um, so the, the new wow. story is not necessarily the, the voice enabled virtual assistant. Like that's something that's been in the works by a number of different companies. Yes. Um, the the new story is specifically centered around having this system set up remotely. You know, mm -hmm. you can set it up at home, making it very user friendly, making it simple and straightforward. Um, and so that's the kind of technology that I think has an edge moving forward. Um, so something like an Amazon Alexa and you just enable a skill. I feel like that's a, that's a great option because then you just, you know, you ask it, um, you know, hey, a dog, I'm not going to say it, don't worry. <laughs> enable this skill and then, uh, it's ready to go and, and that's very user friendly. So this system appears to be kind of along those similar lines of offering a, a very user friendly, very straightforward system that's, be going to have more utility because of that, right? right? That That's where the utility comes from. So that's exciting. Here, I got you. Alexa, subscribe to the Bandage podcast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you can't do that and leave all of our friends over uh, on the other side. Okay, Google, subscribe to the Bandage podcast. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I, I always... I don't, uh, what, I don't know what Apple's is, so... Because no one knows because that's like late to the game. <laughs> well, you could always talk to Siri. Siri, subscribe to the Bandage Podcast. And with that, let's get to our next segment. B R E A C H, Breach Patrol. It's a breach! All of the latest cybersecurity breaches. Welcome to Breach Patrol. We talk about the latest breaches all across the world and cybersecurity issues. Oh my goodness. First up, we have hackers toying with Aptoid. Aptoid, a third-party app store for Android users, suffered a massive security breach. ZDNet reported that a hacker leaked details of 20 million users in a hacking forum. 
ZDNet also reports that people who used or registered on that software between July 21st, 2016 and January 28th, 2018 were affected. Aptoid said it was working with data center partners to determine what happened. They said that most users probably aren't affected since an account isn't required to use the service. It noted that 8.8 .8 million users signed up with their emails and that those credentials were in the database, but passwords are encrypted. Aptoid is still urging those users to change their passwords wherever they're used just in case the cyber criminals use brute force attacks to decrypt passwords. Aptoid confirmed that it's temporarily disabled regulations, registrations, excuse me, logins, reviews, and comments until it feels that users' information is safe. So in college, I took a course in um, basically encryption, right? Mm -hmm. It was a computer science course. And w w the one thing that really sticks in my mind, and I I'll always remember about this class, other than the fact that this professor um, spent a whole day ranting about how your smart car could be hacked to crash you into a wall. Other than that, the other thing that he really drilled into our heads was that any encryption can be broken. Now, it may take an infinite number of years if it's, you know, a ridiculous encryption, but any encryption can, in fact, be broken. So yeah. that's, that's why we're getting the suggestion like, oh, your passwords were encrypted, but you should still change your password because best an encryption practice. could be broken, right? Yeah. So best practice, don't use the same password on every website, but if you do, at the very least, you got to go on every single one of those, and Lord knows there's a ton and change them after one of these breaches have happened. Um, I use the site, Have I Been Pwned? I think you actually showed it mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. So it's Have I Been, and then P-W-N-E-D, Have I Been Pwned.com. And you just put in your email address, and it basically checks the different data breaches to see if, um, if your account is in there. So I just pulled it up right in front of me, and the Aptoid breach is number two under recently added breaches, and it has 20 million entries. Yep, so, that's a lot, okay. folks. A lot of folks. Right. Why not just stick with the Google Store or the Apple Store? I don't know. But, you know, it's beyond right. like 20 million people, so apparently so, they have something that's kind of cool. So my first email address, just to give you a, kind of a example of, of what have I been com does, my very first email address that I've had since I was eight years old, um, it has been exposed in 2,844 data breaches. So Perfect. Sounds great. Including a breach uh, from a company called Exactix. You think there's some uh, copyright issues going on here? I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> Next up, Polar plunging into a snowbank of data. According to another report by ZDNet, an anonymous hacker gained access to a Webkins database containing usernames and passwords of about 23 million users. The information was leaked on a popular internet forum. A hacker used an SQL injection vulnerability on the website to obtain access to the database. Hackers also gained access to email addresses of parents, but this database hasn't been leaked publicly yet. It's unclear whether the hackers also access details of archived accounts. Webkins detected the vulnerability and has patched it to prevent further hacks. The company is also improving its encryption techniques and is reviewing all points of entry into its system. Yeah, so this, Webkins, man. A lot of yeah. kids a lot of kids crying right now. They can't get on their Webkins and check out their, their animals and take it, care of Is Webkins even still popular? Who knows? I mean Apparently. that that was something that was popular. I don't know, in like 2005, 2007 maybe, it was like peak popularity of Webkins. It, it just shows you that nothing is safe, right? This site that is arguably not like super well trafficked compared to when it once was, is the, the target of a hack. Yeah. The site which has a target demographic of kids who well, don't yeah. have a bunch I mean, of you know credit history and whatnot. It is possible that these kids created their own what email to create a Webkins account, and then I'm sure Webkins has some paid things, so they asked their mom for credit card information, and 
their, their passwords for that email that they use to register on Webkins is probably like not that complicated. So mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it'd be very easy pickings to get parents' credit card information. I, mean, it, I don't know if that's a popular website anymore. So maybe a lot of those credit cards have expired by now, but who knows? Right. It, it doesn't say that they got access to payment information. So right. I, I think that they were safe in this case. Um, it, it does say that they got to some of the, the parents' information, though we don't know if they actually like took that because it hasn't been released. Right. Um, maybe they were just trying to gain access to, to people's animals. This was uh, a, a dog napping scheme, if you will. Yeah. <laughs> there are a lot of games out there today that have like cosmetic skins and whatnot mm -hmm. virtual in these games and one of the the more common hacks or scams that you'll see is that people will gain entry into an account and then they will take all of these cosmetic skins because they have real value and give them to their own account yeah and so i'm wondering if there may have been something similar as the goal in webkins it's like is there something in webkins that you can trade between users and their goal was actually just to go in there and take those things. Only time will tell. Next up we have Nintendo Switch, your account password. A number of Nintendo users reported that their Nintendo Switch accounts have been accessed by unknown parties. There have been reports from around the world of these breaches, but they're not affecting all users. The only real damage that seems to have happened so far is with some people who have PayPal linked to their account. Hackers used these to buy Fortnite V-Bucks and other in-game items. It's easy to see if there's been any suspicious account on personal accounts by visiting the sign-in history page for activity that wasn't the user. It's best to turn on two-step verification, which Nintendo recently tweeted about a few weeks ago. This made some fans suspicious that there was recently a security issue. Whatever happened, it doesn't seem to be widespread yet, but it's best to be cautious. Nintendo has not yet commented on the issue. I am checking my PayPal account as we speak. I guess I should have read the next story before I started talking about people stealing virtual skins and whatnot. Yeah, literally. Within video games. I was specifically thinking of games like CSGO. Um, mm -hmm. But Fortnite too, yeah. And, and in this case, they're not like taking the skins. They're taking the money to right. buy skins for their account. Now, I, d I don't know why you would want to do that necessarily because as of right now, Fortnite doesn't have a way to sell those things. So it's not like you can then get the real money out of it somehow. Right. But, you know, maybe they're just trying to make accounts with a bunch of skins to sell. Like, they want to sell the actual account. Yeah, most likely. Most likely. Who knows, man? Definitely change your account password. I actually, I, I've had a few of my video game type accounts. Um, breached at some point, so I usually turn on two-factor identification just whenever yeah, I sign as up. As always, I mean, you should, anytime you do any accounts, there's so many millions of accounts that you might as well just put two-factor on everything, so that way even if your password gets breached, they have to have your phone or some sort of device that they can access beyond that, so right. it's definitely a best so, practice. Change so here's password, something to be aware one, of, though. Number two, have two-factor authentication. The, the challenge that we're going to face, though, as we move into this two-factor identification world um, is that we have to make sure that we're actually verifying with the right people, right? So here's how this works, and here's what you need to watch out for. You get a phone call, and they say, Hi, this is uh, Jim from Verizon, or whichever phone company you have. Mm -hmm. uh, we've detected some suspicious activity on your account, and we just want to review that with you. Am I okay to send you a verification code? And they will be trying to access your account, and they will ask if they can send you that code. And when you read that code to them, they will gain access to your account. And then they will have access to all of your two-step verifications, right? Because right. they can get in and view your text messages. They can you know, copy basically your phone so that notifications get sent to, to them. So that's the, the worry with two-factor identification. Right. It can't just be send us a code because that too can become compromised and, and you should watch out for that. Your phone company is never going to call you and say, what is the verification code I just sent you? It won't happen. It's never going to happen. If that does happen, you should say, give me a second. I have to, I don't know. Uh, I'm using the bathroom. I'll give you a call right back. Hang up and call your phone company. 
Google the right. phone number, call the phone company, and ask them, hey, did you just call me? Because if they did, they will know. Don't call the same phone number. <laughs> Look up the phone number for your company and, and give them a call. You know, I've had to do that before I had a phone call that said, hey, I've got your grandmother on the line and she needs access to the account. And I'm like, well, <laughs> sure she does. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Why would my, my grandmother need access to my account? Um, so what, that's what I did. I hung up and I called back the phone company using their support line in their app and said, hey, I just got a call that said she needed access. Turns out she actually did. There was a mistake for some reason. Um, she is on my dad's account, which is not linked with mine, but they thought that she was on my account, so they called me. I don't know how it happened, but it was a legitimate call. It sounded fishy. So the point of the story, if you're ever suspicious about an incoming phone call, hang up, look up the correct number, call them back. Stay safe out there. Yeah. Yeah, and with that, that is it for this week's wrap-up of your weekly healthcare and data security news. I'm Alex Ross. And I'm Matt Moneypenny. And we will see you next week. Thank you for joining us for this week's episode of The Bandage. This week's episode was written and produced by eTactics. eTactics is a leading revenue cycle solutions organization committed to providing innovative, web-based solutions that improve our clients' cash management and customer relationships. Thanks, and we'll see you next week.